Good evening, everyone. This is Steve and Jenny from Stormy Sky Rail Productions. We're invited to our friend Howie's house here for uh operating session on his huge layout here, which uh, we'll go ahead and introduce Howie here, and he can do a brief tour for us. Go ahead, well, Howie. Thank you. And uh, this is my Conrail uh, Carruthers Branch layout. It's a what-if concept of uh, Conrail in 1980. I like to do early, early Conrail. Um, loosely fitted from Toledo Outer Yard to Mansfield, Ohio. Um, what um, operational wise, uh, a few road traits throughout the session, uh, mostly a lot of switching. Uh, I designed it for a, a lot of switching. Okay, so, well, we can go around and tour the layout, and then you can give everybody a good brief. We start up top, this would be Toledo Outer Yard, which is no longer in, is in existence in real life. Um, this yard, it, it, it receives uh, maybe about four road trains a session, but uh, probably about six interchange uh, transfer trains from different railroads, which was around in Toledo in 1980, such as the DT&I, the Ann Arbor, B&O Chessie, uh, we have airline transfers. We have the N and W that comes in, um, and then we have several local turns that are originated here out of out of Toledo that go to Woodville, and they work the stone quarries in Woodville. We have uh, the Bettsville turn, which goes out and works the roof and shingle plant in Bettsville. Um, Maple Grove turn that works the grain elevator, and then a uh, rather large industrial complex out at uh, Tiffin, Ohio. That switches out Campbell Soup at the New York Central side, which is actually based off of actual industries in Tiffin around the time period, but none of those industries exist anymore. So this would be Outer Yard, and you move south, would be my version of the CNO at Walbridge Tower. That would be the CNO passenger main moving south to the Crandall Road crossovers, which is where that local is sitting there. That's coming back from Maple Grove. Um, then we get into Woodville, Ohio, which that is the Ohio limestone plant there. And then we have uh, it's an old part name up there. I can't remember the name of that that plant, but anyways, it's another one. The Woodville Depot, an inner plant switcher. The house there for a little alpha switcher that pops out. Woodville Depot, hand throw crossovers at Woodville. Woodville Yard. Coming south into uh, Gibsonburg, Ohio, where it went in a single track. And we have uh, Mosier Lumber and Brick. And we have uh, the ConAgra fertilizer plant on the other side. Those were the two main industries in Gibsonburg. Mosier Lumber and Brick wasn't really a place, but ConAgra was. We moved south into uh, Burgoon, Ohio, where the Lake Area and Western crossed and into Bettsville where the Finley Oil Roof and Shingle Plant located. Got a little siding there for the industry switcher to go into. We come into Maple Grove, Ohio with United Grain Growers and an elevator there that a local comes down and works. The now closed abandoned Maple Grove Tower, the old nickel plate, which is now single track. And it goes into, well, more or less a, a siding right there where that Tiffin job is. Never made it back into town to do it. Got uh, Kevin uh, Dar Scrap and Metal there, an abandoned factory. Cromers, Ohio, where 
it comes comes back into the main line. Campbell soup, which really didn't exist in Tiffins. It was actually supposed to be American Standard, the toilet capital of the world, but uh, I didn't have the right building, so Campbell soup it is. It works. Uh, then we have Coleman Yard in Tiffin, Ohio. Tiffin Tower, that is an actual replica of what Tiffin Tower actually looked like. A friend of mine built that, Scratch built that. The back side here is the New York Central side that goes across the B&O, which is there. And then this is the main line here. This would be downtown Tiffin. And uh, the New York Central side goes all the way back there and serves all those industries if you want to get a better shot on the other side of the Felix. Okay, so uh, we're coming up to this interesting view here of the helix and how he will tell us all about this helix so everybody interested can uh hear it from the man who built it uh yeah it's a it was a project that's the third layout that this helix has been on and it's proven how sturdy it is um each one of these angled pieces is cut pretty much identically to form the helix which is 72 inches on center at the 36 inch radius it goes up five times for about two feet which is just a little over one percent grade so um the only way to, and then it's threaded rod which which just anchors in and i mean it's it doesn't go anywhere it's probably the best way to build a helix it's a, it takes some time it's worth the effort when it's done if you make a mistake, which you can see in there, there's a few pieces that are kind of off. We used from the original, our math wasn't quite right. So it ended up looking like a uh, oblong football. Mm. The first couple things and we had a lot of firewood. So we had to go buy a few more sheets of plywood and make sure we cut them on the right angle. And uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really pleased with the way it came out. And uh, like I said, it's the third, third layout it's been on. Okay, thanks for the explanation on this. We're back in, uh, what town are we That would be Tiffin, in? Ohio. That's the uh, New York okay. Central Industrial District. Actually modeled off of several actual uh, industries that were at one time in Tiffin. off the helix into Carruthers this is an actual replica of Carruthers Depot that Not, now this is the built. lower level this is the lower level so this is a two level uh, yeah. layout two level layout okay this would be where it crosses the N and W okay and it goes to Portsmouth Ohio <laughs> so I have uh, Carruthers Yard actually existed at one time and I use Carruthers Yard to handle several uh, industries and different sorting of uh, industry cars It would be McAllister Chemical Company. McAllister Chemical Company. Named after a good friend of mine, Clark McAllister. Area of uh, double crossovers, which I call Frank. South to the Crimea River Bridge which was actually saved off of a good friend of mine's layout back in Chicago, a BN layout. 
and he was going to throw it in the dumpster, and I grabbed it, and I said, I don't know, I could use this. track to a point that I call Hickman, Ohio, where titanium plastics exist. Wish I had a light under there for you. That's fine, we can see. That's pretty well. Coming into uh, New Washington, Ohio, where the Penzi crossed the AC and Y at Stack Tower. So those two tracks back there did the AC and Y interchange. And then located in New Washington was a rather large grain elevator, which really was never served by the Penzi, it was served by the AC and Y, but in my world. Kind of a cool little operation to run. Yeah, it look, looks really neat. Around the bend in the Tyro, Ohio, where Weevil Creek is, and the Siebens Brewery. Actually, the Siebens Great Lakes Brewery. <coughs> That's a neat little job. Most guys that work it, it takes them just about all session to do it. Okay. <laughs> now, what's the story about the behind uh, these bottles here? Well, I bought a 12 pack of Miller High Life, and every single one of them had their labels on upside down. Huh. So why not? Yeah. Keep them. Put them on the brewery, and then uh, I've only bought one six-pack of Monty Python's Holy Grail, and I've never seen it again. Okay. So I kept a bottle. I thought it was pretty cool. Point where the main line comes in at Tucker, and that becomes yard limits going into Mansfield Yard. This, this must be the diesel facility. Yep. Mansfield Diesel Facility. It'll be the west end of Mansfield Yard. Around the corner to a little fiddle yard for holding all the industry cars for the Mansfield Switching District. So it must be uh, that yard. Mm -hmm. A little switch engine. And that big facility is cast in paper. And you have uh, M-Tile Manufacturing. 
Ohio produce would be next. And then the big Westinghouse plant down in uh, Mansfield, Ohio. And then the area I haven't quite built yet with the tower there, that's going to be an area where the Erie used to cross. Future endeavors. Always a project. So, go ahead and then we'll explain this, I guess. The staging area. The place where you put all the <clears throat> locomotives. I have, I have several Conroe locomotives. I ro rotate them in and out with the trains. For each operating session. So the upper level of staging yards are for the upper level of the layout. Yeah, it's like the uh, eastern and northern terminus points of uh, of the railroad, like uh, Elkhart, Ohio, or Elkhart, Indiana, uh, Detroit, Michigan, Jackson, Michigan. Um, all the local transfers in and out of Toledo, like the B&O Miami Street Yard, the NNW transfer, you got airline transfer, you got the Ann Arbor, uh, the shoreline, okay. and then, uh, you know, what, four or five road trains. Okay, and then uh, I'll zoom around here to the... And we got the bottom staging. The lower level staging is the uh, eastern terminus points of uh, Pittsburgh, Buffalo, Meadville, uh, Youngstown. So then we go into the second uh, part of the staging area, which is just an el elongated, you know, part of the whole. Yeah, so thing. it just holds more storage. Holds more storage, yeah. The upper half. And the lower half. We'd like to thank Howie for uh, taking us a tour of his huge layout, uh, including the Helix. Uh, we will put a link to his channel which has a great array of videos uh such as we've got uh, lots of videos from several different operating sessions here some radio traffic um i have uh videos from my former layout in manuka illinois which was uh three divisions we had the uh fort wayne line we had the columbus line and the cincinnati line we actually had two train dispatchers two tower operators buckeye yard in columbus which is a hump yard and that took uh, four people to run. And uh, yeah, it, there's, a, there's a lot of good video on there from the last layout. <coughs> so We will put a, a link in the, our description in this video to check out his st uh, stuff on his channel. Uh, when you do check out that video on his channel, uh, please hit the subscribe button and hit that like button. And please comment on the videos that you watch. Also, thanks for watching and please subscribe to our channel. Hit that thumbs up and leave a comment. This is Stormy Sky Rail Productions saying thank you, Howie, for bringing us here. Anytime. And have a good evening, everyone. This is Steve from Stormy Sky. Have a great night.